What's up guys, welcome back. That slight chill in the air means that fall is here, but more importantly, that means it's chili season. And you know I got a recipe for you, but before we get into that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell and enable notifications as well. All right, enough running my mouth, time to get in the kitchen and make it happen. We're gonna start by dicing up two bell peppers, one red, one green, followed by one to two jalapenos, depending on your heat preference. Now, speaking of heat preference, all of the spice tends to be packed into these seeds. So if you want it to be a little less spicy, like me, I'm kind of a punk, go ahead and remove those seeds from one or both of your jalapenos. Totally optional and really depends on how spicy you want your chili. This Dow Strong knife is making quick work of the veggies. If you're in the market for a new knife, I have linked to this particular knife in the description box below. You get 10% off with the code make it happen at checkout. When you're chopping your veggies, try to make sure they're all the same size so they cook at the same rate. We're doing the same here with our white onion. Just give it a nice rough chop. No need to make it super pretty. They're all gonna cook down in that chili anyway. There we go, we have our red bell pepper, our green bell pepper, and our jalapeno pepper, along with that white onion. As always guys, the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below. We have our Dutch oven nice and hot, going in with some avocado oil and three strips of bacon that have already been chopped up. If you're not into pork, you can skip the bacon altogether. Otherwise, you wanna render that fat from the bacon that's gonna provide the foundation of flavor for the rest of the dish. You just wanna slowly cook the bacon so it gives us all that delicious fat to work with and provide some fond at the bottom of the pan that's also gonna provide some flavor for this recipe. Once it starts to get crispy, take your slotted spoon and remove the bacon from the pot. We'll add it back in later. And then we're going in with two pounds of ground beef. This is 80-20, but 85-15 would work here as well. If there's any excess fat, we will strain that off later. I'm adding some smoked paprika here. Add some nice smoky flavor to the chili. Along with some chipotle chili. All of this you can find at any gro local grocery store. And I'm also gonna add in some ancho chili. I enjoy the flavor profile of this uh, blend here, but you know, feel free to tweak it to your personal preference. One of my secret ingredients is cinnamon. I actually learned that from an old lady I used to work with named Miss Eileen. Shout out to you, Miss Eileen. You uh, definitely stepped my chili game up. Adding in some salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, followed by a pinch of sazon. Give that meat enough time to brown a bit, and then you wanna fold in all of those delicious seasonings and flavors that we just added to the pot and cook your meat until it's no longer pink and continue to stir constantly to just work in all of those flavors. All this excess fat, we're gonna go ahead and strain that off now. And then we're gonna add in our diced veggies. Again, keep stirring constantly. Let those flavors come together and get to know each other. kind of like we used to do before COVID. Adding in two tablespoons of minced garlic and that diced bacon from earlier along with one tablespoon of better than bouillon chicken base. That stuff is amazing guys. If you haven't tried it yet, I highly recommend it. You can find it in most grocery stores in the chicken broth aisle or just order it on Amazon if you can't find it. It's good to have in the fridge. Now I'm going down with one tablespoon of tomato paste work that in as well I know I always tell you guys to taste as you go but it's particularly important with chili just because there's so many different ingredients that you're adding flavors change over the course of you know the cooking time and it's just important to always taste as you go there's our best friend Worcestershire sauce followed by some hot sauce I'm a Texas Pete guy myself but feel free to use whatever your favorite hot sauce is for this recipe and you want to add enough to taste Again, depending on your spice preference.
Now I'm going in with about half a beer. The other half is for me to drink. We use Modelo here because we're trying to stay Corona free. Sorry, Corona. Just kidding. Corona's pretty good. Mix that in, allow, uh, bring it up to a simmer, allow that uh, alcohol from the beer to cook off. Beer, again, is optional. If you're not into beer, you can use chicken stock or beef stock. Going in with one can of fire roasted tomatoes. Mix that in. And then I'm using a half can of crushed tomatoes and one can of tomato soup. Tomato soup is also another uh, secret ingredient that I use in my chili. Trust me on this one, you wanna add it. It's gonna add a nice creaminess to your chili. Adding some black beans and some kidney beans. Close your eyes to all my Texas subscribers. I know you guys don't get down with uh, beans in your chili, so please forgive me. I'm from Virginia. Chili is like a big flavor family reunion. You just want everything to kind of come together, have time to really allow those flavors to marry. Then we're gonna cover it with our lid and let that simmer for about an hour. Then we're gonna come back and check the flavor. I'm adding two to three tablespoons of brown sugar here, followed by a tablespoon of hot sauce. and a little bit more seasoning. This here is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Chili is definitely one of those dishes you have to taste and tweak as you go. Adding a little bit more chili powder as well. And some more smoked paprika. And give that a nice mix. Looking good. Get everything off the side so nothing burns. Nothing like a good bowl of chili. Let me know in the description box what you like to add in your chili. I'm adding a little bit more of my secret ingredient, a little pinch of cinnamon here, and some cayenne pepper to kick the heat up just a touch. Give that a nice mix. I'm also going in with a few dashes of liquid smoke just to kick up the smoky flavor. You can find that at most grocery stores as well. A little bit goes a long way though, so don't get crazy with the liquid smoke. This coming Thursday, I have my skillet cornbread recipe for you guys, so stay tuned for that. That pairs beautifully with this chili that we're making today. Nice and thick, looking good. I'm gonna make me a bowl of this chili so I can give it a taste and plate it up for you guys. Again, this is all personal preference. I like a little cheddar cheese with my chili, followed by some sour cream, and a little diced green onion for a pop of color and some flavor. And then that cornbread I told you guys about earlier. Man, that's delicious. You know I gotta get a taste of this. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe as much as I do. I know there's a million ways to make chili. This is just one of my favorite ways to do it. And I know fall is here, so I hope you guys really enjoy. All right, enough talking, Matt. Get in there and give it a taste. First, you gotta mix in that sour cream with everything. Gotta have a bite of that cornbread in the mix. All right, the moment of truth. Mmm. Damn, that's good chili. All right, guys, that's my chili recipe. I hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that bell and enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.